This is Muzzy. The, she's a 2020 Dodge uh, Promaster van that I built for my daughter, Jamie. Muzzy was her grandmother's nickname, so the van's built in her honor. The bill took a couple of years, working off and on, whenever she could bring her out to my place uh, for, and leave her for a little while. Jamie's a Star Wars fan, so there's some Star Wars touches in the design. <clears throat> but before we started building anything, we sat down and we discussed just how she was going to use this fan. She's, uh, she's not going to live in it. She's a single professional uh, who travels a lot for work, mostly in the state and uh, enjoys weekend camping and, and the occasional road trip. It's, it's the short wheelbase van, so it's compact and it's easy to park. It's, and it's pretty stealthy. Uh, there's practically nothing on the outside that uh, indicates that it's a motorhome. It was a challenge, though, getting everything she needed in, in a pretty small space. She doesn't need uh, like a huge garage space for bicycles and other toys and things. And, and the bunk beds, uh, gives her some flexibility for uh, bringing along a friend when she wants. A large solar panel on the roof means that the fridge is always cold and a lot of storage space means that Muzzy is always packed and ready to go. The whole project started during COVID when she wanted to go on a cross-country trip, but she didn't want to stay in hotels or fly. So she rented an empty van from Hertz and took a 6,000 mile 30 day coast-to-coast -coast trip from California to upstate New York and back, and she just had the time of her life. I just had a, a few days to throw together something she could use for furniture in that van, so I drew up something using uh, wash, like dishwashing basins for storage. Uh, and then we had a last-minute request for a bunk bed because her cousin decided to go with her. So she had so much fun on that trip that when she got back, she bought a brand new one and brought it over to me directly from the dealer. We worked up some preliminary designs just to get a feel for what it was going to be. And it, that changed some over time, but mostly we stuck to the original layout. Uh, we, uh, we laid it out in tape on the floor and then, and then mocked it up to get to just to see how it would feel. And then I uh, started making patterns, started by making patterns uh, for the floor framing. I had to run some big wires and plumbing under the floor framing, uh, which is a, g a good reason to get your design solid and stick to it because it's pretty hard to do this kind of stuff later on. I used some pre-finished half inch plywood for the subfloor. And then I got up on a brand new van and cut a hole in the roof for the vent fan. But you got to have a vent fan. We, uh, we installed the sound deadening stuff on all of the uh, sheet metal panels. And then we insulated the floor and the walls and the ceiling. I had to use some sticks to hold up the ceiling panels while the glue dried. We stuffed the cavities with a wool insulation. So we located the big 200 amp hour battery and a couple of chargers. And then our floor plan called for the inverter to be on the other side, which is why there was big fat wires running under the floor. All the wood in the van is poplar, finished with a clear flat water-based varnish. So a legendary van builder named Quinn uh, made one with this kind of slats and black background. And Jamie and I thought it was probably the most beautiful van we'd ever seen. So we just unabashedly copied him. So thanks, Quinn. The black stuff is a self-adhesive rubberized sound deadening material. And now we found a uh, great little propane heater. Uh, and it has a thermostat, which she insisted be right by the bunk, so she could turn that heat on in the morning without even getting out from under the covers. Uh, it works just wonderful. It, it blows right out this little hole right down the middle, and the intake is behind the driver's seat. The combustion intake and exhaust run through these smaller pipes down through the floor and outside.
And it's powered by these cute little half-size propane tanks that we found and I located under the end of the cabinet. But they're uh, only accessible from the outside. This is a, the, the door on the right there is where they are. And uh, this is the view from with the sliding door open. Uh, they're sealed from the inside. This is the inside view and that panel on the left is where they are, but it doesn't open because you don't want propane in the, in the van. Do you? The cabinet it's in is vented through the bottom because propane's heavier than air. So it's vented right down through the floor and outside through this uh, adapter covered with screen to keep the critters out. She also has a little uh, propane fire pit with a long hose and a quick disconnect that hooks right up to her propane. And it stores under the end of the bunk here in the back. I made the tanks out of a sheet ABS. I had to make several small ones because of the layout of the bottom of the van. And we just used a uh, regular RV water pump. Now our stealth method for filling the tanks uh, so that there's nothing on the outside of the van is I put the filler inside in the sink. So when the tanks are full, it uh, just runs down the drain. The overflow runs down the drain. And also, and for stealth, I put a very discreet little uh, shore power outlet black in the back in the back bumper just black on black so you hardly notice it <clears throat> we put the biggest solar panel we could fit up there you can barely see it from the ground and, it, and you can't even tell it's a solar panel uh, I bought one of those swivel kits to turn the seat around but it's so high that you need a footstool uh, but it's nice to have a little lounge chair we made the beds using couch webbing, which we stretched tight and stapled to a wooden frame. Uh, the, uh, the upper bunk can be either a couch back or a bunk. And there are flip up brackets. You can see me manipulating one there that support the front edge. And then it can also be swung up out of the way uh, during the day and it gives you a lot more elbow room to walk around. Now one of those little pop-up brackets that support the front of it uh, needed a housing, needed a place to be mounted. So I dressed it up to look like a lightsaber holder just for a little Disney fun. In order to make this upper bunk uh, pivot the way I wanted to. I couldn't just use a simple hinge because when it's uh, in the up against the ceiling position, uh, the bottom edge of it has to go down. And when it's down in the couch position, the back has to go up. So I made double hinges using little pillow box, pillow blocks. This uh, countertop was a, a slab of an elm tree. We had a friend that had a dead elm tree in their yard. So I went over the chainsaw and cut a big old slab. And then I had to rip that in half so that it would fit in my little planer and we ran it through about a million times to get it down to thickness and once it was there then i glued it right back together again and uh, cracks and all and then filled all the cracks and imperfections with black epoxy including the ones um, on the edge and then i coated it with a, a durable kind of a ceramic coating that makes a good countertop and it worked out pretty good and obviously the customer was satisfied for the closet, I had to do some pattern cutting, but uh, I wanted that curve, not just for aesthetics, but also as a graceful way to meet the back door. The bathroom was going to get a matching curved door originally, but we decided that having a solid door right up in front like that just made the van a little too claustrophobic. So we settled on a half door, which is fine for a single person traveling alone. But if you need a little more privacy, there's a pull down shade. And we have R2D2 to open the door there. So this is what the bathroom looks like when you walk in. Uh, having it open like that just seems to make the van seem a little less crowded. Since it's not going to be a liveaboard van, we decided against the black tank and all the plumbing associated with that. I've made a homemade composting type 
toilet. That avoids dump stations and that embarrassing walk into the restroom with your porta potty tank. Uh, this one's all covered with that same white ABS plastic. There's little storage compartments on both sides and there's even a little bit of storage under the lid, under the main lid. The bathroom's a multi-purpose room. Here we have uh, the light side and dark side light switches, as well as a remote thermometer that tells the fridge temperature and the outside temperature, and that's the solar charger and a, a little tankless water heater. Over here we have a smoke detector, a tank level, battery level, a few other goodies. So here's how this toilet works. The thing up under the seat is called a diverter. I bought it online and it separates the liquids into that jug in the front and uh, solid into, the, into a bucket, which she just lines with a biodegradable uh, plastic bag. And then with a, a little sawdust, uh, it just becomes a matter of tying a bag up and disposing of it just like you would a doggy bag. If you can't dispose of it right away, the, 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 the verter comes with this, what they call a modesty cover. There's uh, motion sensor lights, both in the bathroom and in the main cabinet under the, or main uh, cabinet. So she can get up in the night and, and walk into the bathroom without having to turn any lights on. Another thing that she wanted was uh, a shelf here, just as kind of a staging area, a place to just stash things when she comes aboard and uh, can leave them there temporarily until she gets to the campground where she can put things away. Obviously, you don't want to put too much stuff up there because it keeps you from using the bathroom, but it's a, it's a useful little area. Now, here's what every van needs, a roll-top desk. Since this is often a work van, she needs a place to, she needs a little office. She needs a place for a computer uh, and uh, this one has a pull-out keyboard and then there is a bracket, uh, a swivel bracket for the monitor and there's an electrical outlet inside the cabinet. I made the timbre just gluing little strips onto a piece of canvas. She has a Wi-Fi adapter in the closet that's connected to the cell system so she always has a signal. Uh, in the galley, uh, we have this little control panel with some light switches and uh, the uh, inverter switch and so forth. I had those little tags made by a friend on his uh, 3D printer. For cooking, she uses an induction cooktop. Just hooked up to the inverter. Uh, we got a 2000 watt inverter, so it works just fine. And it stores out of the way. And then here is happy hour, the bar. I had some custom made koozies made, made for Muzzy with a little uh, Star Wars on the back. If you can't read that, it says Spirits for Thugs of All Species. That's from the famous cantina scene. In Dingle, Ireland, she bought some cut crystal glasses. So they have their own special place here in Muzzy. The poem on uh, the front there was written for by a friend. So this is the table, big enough for one or two people, and it just stores completely out of the way. And the rest of the cabin is just drawers and cupboards for storage. That compartment down at the bottom with the vent, that's where the uh, inverter is. So in her little closet, she has room to hang a few clothes and uh, she also has an ice maker, which will make her the most popular person in the campground, I expect. Because she has that Wi-Fi adapter, she can have a smart TV. So it's mounted up here, uh, up against the ceiling, out of the way, and it's held with safety straps. It, it has a bracket that uh, locks it up, and uh, you can see it's a little it's a little struggle here for me to get it to unlock. But I don't trust it, so I put the straps in for the road. It swivels, 
all the way around. She can watch it from the couch or she can swivel it all the way around the other way, open the door and watch a movie sitting by the campfire. Probably the least attractive but most functional storage in this van is this bag, plastic bag holder deal that's hanging on the back door there. But it's very useful and it's a good place to display her travel badges. Now, recently we just added this builder's plate up here that borrows a saying from Walt Disney about never being completed as long as there's imagination left in the world. Now the refrigerator is big and heavy and it's in a drawer here. So those are locks. Those are road locks that I just undid just so we don't want to come flying out when it's on the road. It, uh, it runs on 12 volt or 110, but it seems to work best on AC. So we just leave the inverter on all the time with that solar panel. Uh, that's not a problem. The refrigerator has venting and fans. So I had to mimic those in the cabinet. And I also added a, a couple more active fans. Uh, just to make sure it stays cool. The step stool has hand holes in different places for depending on where you're standing when you want to bring it in. And that, my friends, is Muzzy. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Thanks for watching.